name of Jesus. Amen. And we pray Amen. also for the house, Father. The yes. house, the house, yes. the control of the house are still up for grabs. Yes. And Amen. so, Lord, we we have been trusting you, and we are <laughs> praying, and we are praying by faith, oh yes. God, believing for these it. seats. It we do not accept defeat Thank that has Jesus. been already yes. forecast by some of these networks. Thank you. What we accept is your will and yes. your yes. sovereignty. That's right. And yes. that's what we pray, Lord. We yes. come in alignment with your will for Amen. the House and the Praise Senate God. and for a government that reflects I your kingdom it. and your values right. and, 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 and your biblical Father precepts. So we thank you for Father. that, Lord. Thank you, take Lord. It by faith. Father, I lift this Republican platform to you. <clears throat> yes. It stands by your word, and we will have it that way. Yes, we, we receive it, we take it, and we have it now in Jesus' name. Praise thank God. Thank you, Father. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. Praise Amen. you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Representative Borowitz. Thank you, Speaker. Let's pray. That prayer in the beginning is meant to be inclusive and to bring everyone together. Ways. It was directly a political statement. And I think we need to be very, very clear that everybody in this house matters, whether they're Christian, Muslim, or Jew, and that we cannot use those issues to tear each other down. And, and not only that, it was, at, it was made during my swearing in. I, Movita Johnson Harrell. Which was a moment, not only for my district and my city, but for the entire Commonwealth. To be the first hijabi woman to stand on the state house floor to be elected to the house is great for the entire Commonwealth. So to use my religion against me and the, to then storm off the floor, I thought number one was very, very immature and number two, very, very disrespectful. Representative Borowitz. Thank you, Speaker. Let's pray. Jesus, I thank you for this privilege, Lord, of letting me pray, God, that I, Jesus, am your ambassador here today, standing here representing you, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the great I am, the one who's coming back again, the one who came, died, and rose again on the third day. And I'm so privileged to stand here today. So thank you for this honor, Jesus. God, for those that came before us, like George Washington and Valley Forge and Abraham Lincoln, who sought after you in Gettysburg, Jesus, and the Founding Fathers in Independence Hall, Jesus, that sought after you and fasted and prayed for this nation to be founded on your principles and your words and your truths. God, forgive us. Jesus, we've lost sight of you. We've forgotten you, God, in our country. And we're asking you to forgive us, Jesus, that your promise and your word says that if my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek your face and turn from their wicked ways, that you'll heal our land. Jesus, you are our only hope. God, I pray for our leader, Speaker Terzai, Leader Cutler, Governor Wolf, President Trump. Lord, thank you that he stands beside Israel unequivocally, Lord. Thank you that Jesus, that we're blessed because we stand by Israel and we ask for the peace of Jerusalem as your word says, God. We ask that we not be overcome by evil and that we overcome evil with good in this land once again. I claim all these things in the powerful, mighty name of Jesus, the one who, at, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess, Jesus, that you are Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.
Because you said in your word in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, that we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So right now, let every demonic network that has aligned itself against the purpose, against the calling of President Trump, let it be broken, let it be torn down in the name of Jesus. Let the counsel of the wicked be spoiled right now, according to Job chapter 12, verse 17. I declare declare that President Trump will overcome every strategy from hell and every strategy of the enemy, every strategy, and he will fulfill his calling and his destiny. Destroy and divide their tongues, O Lord, according to Psalm chapter 55, verse 9. Give President Trump strength to bring forth his destiny, according to Isaiah chapter 66, verse 9. Let the secret counsel of wickedness be turned to foolishness right now in Jesus' name. And I declare that no weapon formed against him, his family, his calling, his purpose, this council will be able to be formed. Now I declare that you will surround him and protect him from all destruction. Let the angel of the Lord encamp around about him, around his family, according to Psalm chapter 34, verse 7. Establish him in righteousness and let oppression be far from him, according to Isaiah 54, 14. I deploy the hand of God to work for him him in the name of Jesus. I secure his calling. I secure his purpose. I secure his family. And we secure victory in the name which is above every name, the name that has never failed for this nation and for my life, the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, amen. Well, the fact of the matter is you have to go back a little bit and look at the history of this. My father, Francis Schaeffer, in the 1970s and 80s, along with me as his nepotistic sidekick and people like C. Everett Koop, started something called the Evangelical Wing of the Pro-Life Movement with a film series called Whatever Happened to the Human Race. Fast forward to the present time, I can literally say this. I think the evangelical white voter in this country has become two things. First of all, been driven mad by the issue of abortion. It has become so much of an obsession with part of this group that they would do anything, including uh, sanctifying a guy like Roy Moore, an alleged pedophile, now sanctifying an alleged uh, attempted rapist. So that's point one. Point two, the evangelical group itself has moved so far to the right that it literally is more like a Trump cult now that you would find something in North Korea or whatever supporting their leader than a political movement in the American sense of the word. I don't think people understand that. And I just want to add as a little footnote that there are some former evangelicals like me, former in that we've been kicked out, as it were, not because we've lost faith in Jesus, but we have lost faith in the Republican Party. We are trying to save this country from going any further down this path of this cult, this abortion-obsessed cult that will take anyone and even badmouth someone like Dr. Ford before even hearing her uh, who has been sexually assaulted rather than vote for a Supreme Court justice who might not do everything in the litmus test the Republicans want. It just makes no sense unless you understand this Trump cult is no longer really an American political party in the classic sense we mean it. And that's the point I would like to make.
thank you, divine, omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent creator God for blessing each and every one of us here and now. Thank you, divine creator God, for surrounding and filling us with the, your divine, omnipresent white light of love and protection, peace, and harmony. Thank you for allowing the United States of America to be reborn. Thank you for allowing us to get rid of the communists, the globalists, and the traitors within our government. We love you and we thank you. In Christ